doing work for animals really is the logical progression, kind of that next step that was really made possible by Bound for Home and with Bound for Home really surrendered by appointment. Those changes with the shelter had a, had a huge impact. Because we have more resources per animal, we no longer have to look at all these animals as just one big population. We can start looking at animals as, as individuals. Look at an animal coming in and not just, can we get this animal a home right now, but what can we do to get this animal a home? We need to look at surgery, behavior work, medical work. It doesn't need to go out to our, uh, our wonderful fosters for a few weeks to uh, come around behaviorally. What can we do to get this animal into a home, get this animal adopted? I found Samsonite the day after Christmas. I was pulling into work, it was early in the morning, and it was still dark and I saw something move in the shadows there. And as I got closer, I noticed that it was a cat. He had just this horrible smell. He had just some really bad wounds. I don't know if he was attacked by an animal or what. Somebody left him there. Um, abandoned him basically. Later that day I had ran into our site manager and she had said that she had found a suitcase um, kind of at the front entrance of the Humane Society and she said it had a big hole in it you know it just had this odor to it and he most likely was abandoned in that suitcase. I went to check on him I believe it was a Sunday morning and he was laying flat on his side in this cage. When I opened the cage, he didn't move until I actually touched him. And he raised his head up and looked at me. I noticed right away that his color of his skin and his eyes looked very yellow, which is a really concerning sign in a cat. I started to do my initial exam, and he stood up, um, walked over, and headbutted me. We thought we got him right to the point where we were gonna be able to close the leg. We called in our board certified surgeon to evaluate it and he started to come down with upper respiratory infection. In Samson Knight's case, he was already compromised and we had to postpone the uh, closure of the leg wound for a week while we treated that. It was another hurdle that he had to overcome, but amazingly through it all, he, he kept his attitude. He's gained, I believe about three or four pounds in, since he's been in shelter and his really true awesome personality is coming through. Once he recovered from his URI, uh, Dr. Rasmussen came and closed the leg wound and we sent him out to foster to recover until the stitches came out. What I've learned about Samsonite since he's been in foster, his three favorite things are to eat and cuddle and sleep. Next runner-up is he loves to play, but he's not allowed to play very much. Since he's on recovery, he's got to be a calm boy, and uh, he's definitely well worth every effort that we put into him. He's a fabulous cat, um, probably the best cat I've ever met at the shelter. Kyra came in shortly after Christmas. Her family had brought her in because she had a stroke five years ago. Because of that stroke, um, it made her back left leg paralyzed. She wasn't able to use it. She struggled with it when she was trying to walk. It was getting in the way of her other back leg and she was tripping a lot. Our owners were having a really hard time debating what was the best option for her. Do they amputate the leg? Do they just continue treating it? What's going to be the best for Kyra? I had finally decided to bring her here because the means of being able to take care of her was kind of past what they were able to do. They were really emotional when they came in. They felt bad bringing her in, almost like they had failed her. So we had a long conversation about what her options are here, what we can do for her here in the extensive medical care that we're able to do that they might not be able to do at home because of the costs and everything. We were debating at this point whether it was better for her to keep her leg or if it was better for us to amputate it. So we put that boot on to see if maybe that pressure would help her kind of use that leg more. So we sent her out to foster to see how well she would move around instead of having to maybe amputate that leg. 
for now, it's nice to just be able to help out where they're ready to be on the adoption floor then. And get into their homes. She's a great dog. She's super, super sweet. Definitely she's got her challenges and we're watching her leg, seeing how she, she works with that leg. She's great with kids. She's great with the cat. Very, very mellow, loves kisses. Yeah, so she's been really, really good. We decided that she needs to have her leg amputated. We all kind of came together and decided that that was best. It's been a few days and she's doing so great. She's walking around, she's running around. I mean, that first day, of course, you know, because she was under anesthesia and some of the effects of it and stuff. But, you know, the next morning, she was so great. There was no issues and it was like, she's been that way the whole time. After the leg was amputated, fosters are awful helpful and taking her home and giving her the necessary walks and exercise, the padded bed and the comfort of a home instead of here in the shelter. Now that that leg is gone, she's so happy. Her personality did a total 180. Doing more for animals is, is not just this one amazing case that comes in once a week, once a month. Uh, it's an every animal, every day thing. It really is the support from the community as a whole, from adopters who will uh, give great homes to these animals, to donors who will support all the work we do that allows this to be possible, that we can really look at each one and make the best decision for them.